What's happening, everybody? It's your boy, Charles Wells, a.k.a. C. Wells, coming at you with another edition of Swag Talk, the show where we cover the swag inside and out. Um, today, we're going to continue our 2021 fall season previews as we talk about the Alcorn State Braves. Uh, that's a team whose name has been on a lot of lips since the spring uh, because they did not play in the spring. So now Alcorn is here and they're ready. They've now moved from the east side to the west side. So that's going to be an interesting task for, task for them to undertake. Um, before we get started uh, talking about the Braves, let's go ahead and get all the socials out the way. Uh, they're down in the description below. Uh, Facebook.com slash Swag Talk. Instagram.com slash Swag Talk. Swag Talk 76 at gmail.com is the email address. Also, Swag Talk is a podcast. That's how it started. That's how it still goes. Um, you can check that out on anchor.fm slash Swag Talk. Uh, Spotify, Stitcher, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. You can find it on all of those streaming platforms. And we have a podcast uploading today talking about All Corn State. So be sure to check that out. Um, if you would love to uh, show a little love to the show, uh, hit the cash app, please. Dollar sign slash swag talk. Anything would be appreciated. If not, your love and support is is appreciated. Um, I think right now we're almost at 200 subscribers, 197, I believe. Uh, we're getting it straight up out the mud. So I appreciate everybody for um, coming through and supporting the channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, once you go ahead and do so, hit the notification bell to be alerted to any content that I upload. Like the video, share them, comment. You know. Let me know how you think the Braves season is going to go. I'll comment on any other video. And with that out the way, let's talk about Alcorn. As we all know, uh, if you don't know, Alcorn did not play in the spring. Uh, they were the 2019 fall uh, champs. They were also the 2018 champs. They have been East Division champs since 2014. So this program is a program that's accustomed to winning. Um, they have been winning under our Coach Jay Hobson and then under – uh, Coach Fred McNair. So the one thing that if, if if there's anything that you can take away from Alcorn, I would say the word is consistency. Well, the phrase is consistency as a program. They know what they like to do and they don't get outside of what they like to do. You're they're very rarely going to beat themselves. So if you beat Alcorn, then that means that you had to earn it. Um, they're not really going to turn the ball over. They're going to be aggressive and go after takeaways. So you have to take care of the football. You have to be ready for a team that's going to run the ball and going to be physical and hit. Um, Alcorn is a, definitely a physical team on defense. They're going to knock your block off if you're not careful. So you can't go in there, you know, pussyfooting around. Um, if, you, if you're if able to hit them for big yards, then you've earned every yard that you got. Um, in 2019, Alabama and them uh, hit them for big yardage on the ground. I think Jordan Bentley had a career high game in that game. Uh, Southern had a great game against them in the SWAC championship, but they turned the ball over seven times, and you're not going to beat nobody turning the ball over seven times. So that's just not the way to beat Alcorn. You have to take care of the football. You have to be ready for a physical affair, and you have to be ready for a team that's not going to beat themselves. Um, they, uh, they're coming into the season ranked uh, number 21 in the Hero Sports Poll. Um, they were picked number one in the West Division by the media in the SWAC. So they're predicted to win another division, even though they changed over. Uh, they did not have any guys on the all SWAC team preseason, but I definitely know they're going to have some at the end. Um, they're led by the trigger man himself, Felix Harper, who is continuing a, a line of all corn quarterbacks, uh, starting at John Gibbs Jr. Uh, to Lenoris Footman and uh, Noah Johnson. And now to... Uh, to Felix Harper. So those are some Alcorn guys. They all did it in similar ways. Uh Footman probably was the, the the more of a more of a runner than the other two. Uh, the other other three guys are, are dual threat guys. I think Felix Harper is more of a passer than a runner. Um he can run, but I think he's he's more comfortable uh in the pocket passing the passing the ball. He had over 2,900 yards, 33 touchdowns, nine interceptions, and completed 60% of his passes. Um, he's going to be joined in the backfield by Nico Duffy, who was a, a breakout freshman in 2019, um, a Tampa guy. Um, I, I always support those Florida boys. Um, he's definitely going to continue another a, a, a line of all corn running backs who have been successful. Um, the Charles Pringle at wide receiver had 14 touchdowns on the season. That was all corn single season record. 
So that's the big three that's going to win you a lot of games. Um, obviously, the key for this team is to uh, to get the timing down and and, and the consistency that's going to that's going to take place from playing it, from not playing since 2019. But uh, we're going to talk about that schedule in a minute. Defensively, the secondary, even though they lost Quinterio Cole, their secondary is is full of ball hawks. Um, Keron Kinsler, Jawan Taylor, and Torrance Wilson. Those are all guys who are going to get after the football. Um, Alcorn led the nation in 2019 in interceptions with 23. Um, those, uh, those three guys I named had accounted for eight interceptions on the season. Uh, Wilson had had four of his own. So that's three guys who you're not going to be able to throw the ball against. Uh, defensively, um, they're also led by um, Damian Anderson, a linebacker. Who um, he had 57 tackles and six and a half tackles for loss on the year, and Chris Monroe anchors the defensive line. They lose a guy like Solomon Muhammad, a linebacker who was a big time, a big time player in, in that in that spot. But Alcorn has guys, and Alcorn is going to be physical. You're not really going to push them around, and it's going to be hard to run the football on them. They're a consistent top two or three team in rushing defense, and like like I said before, with the 23 interceptions, if you put the ball in the air they're going to take it away from you. So you have to be careful with how you play against Alcorn. Um, they just, you know, they're going to be a smart team. Um, Coach McNair is not going to have a team that, that makes stupid mistakes. So you really have to be ready to play when you play Alcorn. And I don't see that being any different now. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of concern with not playing since 2019, but they did practice in the spring. So, they're more on the line of a team coming off of a, a, a regular a regular season and, and heading into a season, but they're playing against teams who actually played football in the in the spring and, and they did not. So the key is gonna be how well they adjust. I think they do catch a good break to open the season. Uh they played North Carolina Central in the MEX Swag Challenge on August 28th. Uh, North Carolina Central did not play in the spring, so that's a good a good chance for Alcorn to open up against a team who also is has not played football in a while. Uh, I think this gives them a chance to get their footing under them as an offense, get their timing down, and just be able to hit somebody that's not wearing your uniform. So I think that's the key. I think Alcorn wins that game. Um, I think they win it comfortably, not blowout fashion, but I think they win it comfortably. Uh, September 11th, they come off a, a bye week and they host Northwestern State. This is a this is a must win game. Every from this point on on this show, when I go through my schedules and preview them, if there's a regional FCS opponent on that schedule, this is a must win. If the SWAC has to win these games. It's been said by everybody on, on YouTube. Everybody knows that this is most important. Winning a SWAC championship, great. Win a celebration bowl. I'm right there with you, buddy. But you must win these FCS games because that's where you make your bones since you don't go to the playoffs. You need to win these games. You need to need to win these games, especially against teams like Northwestern State. Northwestern State was one in five in the spring. Uh, they didn't get beat bad. I think their biggest margin of victory was, I mean, margin of defeat was 14 points. But they uh, they lost to Sam Houston State, who won the FCS championship by eight points. So they're not really a pushover, but they're not that good either. This is a game that you must win. Alcorn let that Magnese game slip away. Uh, their quarterback did get injured. Felix Hopper came in in the second half and led them back. They came a three-point short. So they must win this game, especially at home. They must win this game. I don't know how many times I can say that. They must win this game. I think they will. After saying all of that, I think they will, and uh, I think they uh, they they can make a nice little statement for themselves winning this game. Uh, September September eighteenth, they go to Mobile to take on South Alabama. Again, this is a game a lot of people have put Alcorn in as an upset candidate. I like their chances. I'm not gonna a hundred percent say Alcorn's gonna win this game um, because, like I said, a lot hinges on these first two games. Um, if they win both of these games, then I think Alcorn has a great, great chance in the, in this game. If they lose both for their first two games, then I don't think it's gonna be a, a good a good game for them. If they go one and one, the chances of winning slip, but there's still a possibility. Um, a lot of people who who know South Alabama have said this team is not that good. 
um, almost downright bad. But this is a game that, you know, this is a bonus. If they can win this game, this is a bonus. But to go out and play well, which I always look at when you play a power, a group of five team, I definitely expect you to come out and play well. Uh, winning is obviously a bonus, but that step of competing, you cannot underestimate that. Um, coming out and playing well and putting, your, excuse me, putting yourself in position to win a game is definitely huge. So um, I'm not going to pick Alcorn to win this game, but I don't think they lose by much. I do think that they can win this game. This pick will be subject to change once the season gets going. Um, September 23rd, um, Thursday night, a short week. They go to Pine Bluff to take on the Golden Lions in their first West Division matchup. Pine Bluff's a team who a lot of people are underestimating. They're picked fifth in the division by the media. I don't think they'll finish that low. But they have some big losses in the uh, in the portal. I think Alcorn has enough to go to Pine Bluff and win. Um, Pine Bluff still has a lot to prove, but I think Alcorn's going to be a tough matchup for them. So I think Alcorn will get that W. Uh, they take some time off and come back on October 9th for homecoming against Gramlin. Gramlin is a team that we do not know what they're going to do. They were in turmoil in the in the spring. Um, they should be better. Uh, they're picked third in, in the media, but I don't see them being, I don't see them finishing that high. Um, but it's, it's possible if they get their act together. Gramlin matches up well with Alcorn pretty much every year. Um, they beat Alcorn the last time they played in 2019. So they're not afraid of Alcorn. They 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 can challenge them, but I think Alcorn gets this W, um, especially at home on homecoming. I think they get this W. October sixteenth, they go to Valley Itabina. I say it all the time, and I keep saying it until I lose my breath. Alcorn is, I mean, Valley is dangerous at home. Valley is a big dog in their own yard. Now they're not gonna win a lot of those fights, but they're gonna fight like hell at home. So you have to co you have to go to Itabina expecting the grass to be ankle high. You have to expect you know maybe the field be wet. Um, you have to go there expecting mosquitoes as big as hummingbirds. Um, uh, you know obviously that's exaggeration, but you have to go expecting Valley to you know to pull out all the stops to get you. Um, the last time Alcorn went to Valley, the game was closed for a while and Alcorn pulled away. I think it's gonna be the same type of game. Valley has some pieces. I like uh, Caleb Johnson, the running back. Obviously, Jared Garner is a guy who's a beast. Uh, Caleb uh, Jalen Brunson, a guy in secondary who's also really good. But Valley doesn't have depth. So if you can wear them down, then you'll pull away from them. And I think Alcorn has the ability to do that. Um, they stay on the road on October 23rd as they host. They go to Texas Southern. Again, Texas Southern is a team who I think is going to be better this year but not good enough to win a game like this. Um, I think they play close because I, I like I like a couple of things that all I mean that Texas Southern has. I, I like some pieces that they have. And I think they're gonna improve, but they're gonna slowly improve. I think all is gonna be too much for them. October 30th, they go to Baton Rouge to take on Southern. And this is another thing that I'm gonna say till I'm blue in the face, um, which is gonna be a long time because you see me, I can't turn blue immediately. Um until Southern proves to me that they can beat Alcorn, I'm going to pick Alcorn all the time. And I'm a Southern fan. Southern has to prove that they can beat Alcorn and solve their Alcorn problem. Otherwise, I ain't going to pick them. I'm going with Alcorn in this game until Southern can get that hex off of them, uh, get that Indian magic off of them or whatever it is, and, and find a way to win this game. Now, Southern can win this game. Southern was close to a victory in the swag championship turnovers and, and, and not good play calling did them in. Uh, they had one of their better offensive efforts against Alcorn. Uh, defensively, they played fairly well. They gave us some big plays, but I thought they hung in there and they, they did a good job of slowing Alcorn down. Now, if they can get that kind of effort again and not turn the ball over, then they have a good chance of winning this game. But until they get that Alcorn hex out their head, I'm going with Alcorn point blank and period. November 6th, they finished their road trip in Daytona against Bethune Cookman. Bethune Cookman, again, stop me if you heard this before. Everybody's sleeping on this team. I, you know, some people say they're gonna lose to the Valley. Some people say they're worse than Valley. 
I don't see that. Bethune Cookman is a, a team who's going to be a contender in the division. They may not be in that top three, but I think they'll be in that mix, you know, with a couple wins here or there. I think they can they can they can sneak in and finish higher. I don't think they'll win the division, but I think they can finish higher if they if they can put together a couple good games at home. Um, they do have a couple very good games at home to win to help them boost themselves. And of course, the Florida Classic is always there for them. I'm gonna pick them to beat Alcorn in an upset because I, I, Alcorn would be playing their fourth game in a row on the road, and uh, and and. That's four games in a row in a row on the road with no off week. So that's tough. You know, mid-season, you know, bumps and bruises. You know, it's hard to navigate a season unscathed. Um, especially if you're moving fairly well through the conference. A hiccup can happen. But Thune Cookman hasn't lost to a swag team since 2006. They're hungry to finish that game with all corn that they played um a few years ago. Uh the game got canceled by weather. They really felt they was like they were going to win that game. So they're definitely going to be hungry to, to complete that task. Alcorn can win this game. I, I really think they can. But I, I think that the, that four games in a row in the road in the middle of the season with no off week is going to get to them. And the last game typically will do you win in those stretches. November 13th, they come home to close out their home schedule against Prairie View. Prairie View has a good a good defense. They were great, but now they lost a couple big pieces. So I'm bumping them down to good. They still will be a good defense as long as Jason Dumas is on that defensive line. He is a beast. If you haven't watched him before, go look at him. He's a monster in the middle. He's going to definitely make some plays for, for the Panthers on defense. But I think all, all corners offense will be too much. Prairie View has to prove that their offense is, is good. I don't think they would be 2018, 2019 Prairie View offense, but they need to prove that they can score points consistently and move the ball consistently. Alcorn, I think, will get the W. And November 20th, they close out their season on the road at Jackson against the Tigers in the Soul Bowl. I've said it again. I said it. Um, Jackson State, if they get rolling, will be very tough to beat at the end of the season. Um, whether that's enough to win the division or not, that's, that remains to be seen. But Coming into this game, I think Jackson will be on a roll. And I think they beat Alcorn. Honestly, I think they beat Alcorn. If they if Jackson's playing well, I think they beat Alcorn. Um, I don't think it's gonna be a blowout at all. I think it'll be a close game. Alcorn has a chance to win this game. I think that they're good enough to win this game, but I I'm feeling so much so that Jackson State is gonna be rolling by the end of the season. And I think they're gonna be tough to beat at the end of the season. Um, the middle, the beginning portion of the season may trip them up. To make this to where it's not they're not really in, they're not really the leader in the division maybe outside chance at winning the division but Alcorn obviously they'll have to play probably one of their best games to win this game but it's not impossible how they manage that four games that four game road stretch is gonna dictate how they, how this game goes um, right now I'm going with Jackson State because I just think Jackson is gonna be playing pretty good football by the end obviously that's all speculation and guesses because we don't know what jackson's gonna do until they do it but that's that's where i stand with that um looking at the schedule i'm predicting right now a record of eight and three um obviously that's probably to me the worst case scenario i don't see all losing more than three games on the season um most likely they'll finish nine and two um I, I guess if they don't beat Northwestern State, then they probably end up with a four-loss season. But right now, I just don't see that. Um, best case scenario would be a 10-1 and season. I don't see them going undefeated because I think they'll slip up somewhere. It's very hard to go undefeated. So I think 10-1 and is their best case. 8-3 and three is the most likely worst case scenario um, with the caveat of a Northwestern State loss makes a 7-4 and four season. So I, I'll just go ahead and say worst case scenario, 7-4. and four. Best case scenario, ten and one. Uh, they will. I'm I'm picking in to win the West Division. If you saw my video, I picked in to win the West, so I'm not gonna waver on that. But that's why I look at Alcorn right now. I'm happy to see them coming into play because they say they want all the smoke. Alcorn, all you know, the last couple of years, Alcorn has wanted smoke with everybody, and they brought smoke to everybody. And they still say they want the smoke. They want to prove that regardless whether they played in the spring or not, that they're gonna be ready to play. And they're gonna um, they're gonna scalp some people, man. And Braves are gonna get it done out there on the academic resort. 
And I really think that they're going to be a dangerous team. And you know, obviously they have a strong, a strong chance of winning the conference, not just the division. So the celebration bowl could be in their, in their, in their sights. Their motto, one of the models I know is it starts in the A and they're going to end it in the A. So they're looking to play in Atlanta twice. And it's not impossible. I, I, I'm, I'm looking at it pretty well that it's a good opportunity for them to make it there. So with that being said, I'm your boy Charles signing. We'll be back with another edition of Swag Talk on Sunday as we preview the new guys on the block, Bethune Cookman, a.k.a. the sleeping on. Um, we're going to see if if they can make some noise and, and, and wake people up. So we're going to have a podcast on Bethune Cookman and a video on Bethune Cookman. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, I have a couple other things coming down the pipe. Um, I'll drop a little little info on the Instagram page and the Facebook page when I get that all ironed out. So with that being said, I'm your boy C. Wells getting up out of here. Enjoy your hump day and we out.